Ahoy ahoy, and uh, welcome back to my channel. Or if this is your first time watching, welcome, and I hope you like this video, and uh, please do check out other videos in my channel. Um, despite my tone, I am very excited uh, to show you this, because this is a project that I've been working on for quite some time. Uh, months, in fact, uh, whenever I could get time off work. Um, these are uh, my second batch of custom mini LPs, but uh, they are actually the albums that were left off the US Al the Beatles US Albums box set. Um, for just a quick uh, recap, the US Albums box set is a box set that comprises uh, that comprised that is comprised of the uh, albums that were released in the U.S. by uh, Capitol Records and United Artists. Um, and the packaging is... Uh, they are mini LP replicas and the, the, uh, the, the packaging was very good. Um, the audio, on the other hand, is... Uh, it's a separate topic. It's just that, you know, it's very um, uh, polarizing, to say the least. You know, the... The mixes weren't the same ones that were used in the U.S. Um, original U.S. releases, so you're kind of buying it for the packaging, which is uh, superb. They're very, they, they're very good um, replicas and down to the inner sleeves. So, although the problem with that bo box set is they um, they released all the, the albums from 1963 until 19, 1966 with uh, Revolver, and then they skipped to Hey Jude, the compilation that was released um, around 1969, or was it 1970? Um, so um, there, there's a big gap, and I understand why. I think what you know, why they did it. Uh, the basis was the audio, and there really is not. Well, there, the mixes on these albums, these five albums, a Sgt. Pepper, the White Album, um, Yellow Sovereign, Abbey Road, and Let It Be, the mixes weren't different, uh, the, or rather they weren't unique to the U.S., so they left these off. Well, except for Sgt. Pepper, the original U.S. release didn't have the looping um, inner groove on the, the second side. So, yeah, that's it. They skipped it, although I made these because there are enough um, differences in the packaging that I think merits inclusion, at least, um, and which we are going to uh, take a look. So just a quick, oh, you know, let's uh, let me just uh, do that uh, later. So we're gonna take a look at uh, the first one, which is um, Sergeant Pepper. So like uh, most uh, U.S or the Capitol of Records releases. Uh, in comparison to the original, uh, the UK release, these are made with boards. Uh, the thing is, thing with the UK releases is they were directed print, uh, printed direct to board. So, yeah, they're e pretty easy to make. These are more difficult to make, actually, more challenging because uh, they are boards and then the graphics were printed on slicks. So, let me just show you. I asked. I actually asked around um, some of the Beatles groups because apparently the capital version of the album um, only has one pocket, and I, I it, and it's. Um, I, I took a look at a lot of reference photos for it, and uh, so the way that this is built is you have the slicks, and then, or rather the boards. You know, the pre I I made a lot of the preformed boards here, and then. I kind of messed this up a little bit. Didn't want to cut it, so I just kept it as it is. Um, but there are boards, and then the paste overs are here. So it's a, in the case of Sgt. Pepper, it's a single piece here, and then it, the larger slick, and it's pasted over here, and then a smaller slick here. So, and then here. So key differences. Um, it only has one pocket. So I was told that the cut a cardboard cutout was actually um, when you buy it, it's shrink wrapped and it's sold like this. You you get the cutouts like that. Um, yeah, it's just a printed on three hundred GSM board, nothing fancy. Except I oh, I 
altered it a little bit to make sure that I'm just not focusing with yeah to make sure that print in the USA is included there and then the um, inner sleeve I also made this a custom inner sleeve um, if you're you've been following my Instagram you may know it you may have seen a screenshot of me uh, redoing the vectors. I redid all the vectors here. I took a picture of the uh, original, the UK sleeve, and then I just, you know, put the graphics together and uh, retraced the vectors and just um, sampled the color so that they match. And then printed this on a, um, oh, well, this is 100, 120 GSM, I think. And then um, laser printer, so it looks, yeah, the texture is somewhat the same. And then just before that, of course, I also added a little bit of detail here, which is in the um, original US release. So there it is. The um, And then, yeah, of course, you can see the folds in here. This is difficult to make, actually, just make, to make it as clean as that. It's not easy, <laughs> but yeah, so also the small details here you also have the catalog number like in the catalog release there's the spine and then of course the stereo band right here and I also had to trim some of these uh, just to match what's on the I, I've seen some reference photos where um, this part there's actually more graphics here or rather more of the image here in the UK release so there and then of course the back uh, same as the UK release except for the um, catalog number up there and the capital uh, uh, logo and the uh, made in the US um, statement for the fine print at the bottom so that is Sgt. Pepper now uh, we are going to take a look at the white album right here let me just uh, get this out of the way so the white album well I modeled this after the first release SWB0101 so as you can see that's the spine right here unlike the UK version uh, the white album was never released in mono so there's no um, uh, you, you don't see the separate catalog number for the mono release here and of course there's the stereo marking right there and like the Sgt. Pepper this is a double uh, the the slick we'll talk about this later um, the slick is uh, the larger slick is in, on the inside and then it just wraps around here and then you know book binding uh, miter well actually I didn't use miter cuts here because the, these are open ends and uh, unlike the UK release this, these are side loading so um, I most of the elements actually almost all the elements here are modeled after the SWBO 101 release except for the front logo <laughs> because I've had so many uh, copies in my collection of the you know the standard uh, thick the bold Helvetica font and the um, you know the embossed of course I have the super deluxe edition I have the uh, 2009 edition so they, they sort they ha all have the same logo anyway so I thought I would put in a different logo here and use the logo that was used on the a later pressing I think it was mid 70s um, I'm not sure but there is a pressing that had white vinyl on it and the logo is uh, like this a standard Helvetica uh, font uh, rather the not the not the bold face but the regular Helvetica f uh, font right here I debated on whether I should put a uh, serial number because I could if I wanted to um, the US releases would have had the a prefix and then the numbers um, but one I you know it, <laughs> I couldn't think of a good sequence of numbers to use I mean I thought of putting in my birthday but <laughs> uh, I thought you know it's cheesy and <laughs> and you know I didn't want to be showing everyone what my birthday complete birthday it is so 
and also a, a friend asked me to make an uh, another one for him so yeah just we sort of had decided to just leave the serial number out out of it would have been nice though I, I don't know I might make another one with a serial number but probably not so before I open this so I made also made this um, hype sticker I replicated the hype sticker that comes with the um, early pressings of the album so it's um, there it is and actually print uh, this is a second print run the first uh, print run this is an actual sticker on sticker paper semi glossy um, I had it printed and then I uh, I think I still have a sample of it somewhere oh no I don't um, the uh, the sticker says while my guitar gently weeps so there's a I typed in an extra R in there so I had to reprint it but yeah this is it now it's corrected of course so uh, I might decide to stick it here in the future but I'll just uh, leave that as it is for today so you know I forgot to mention that with the Sgt. Pepper um, disc the discs themselves were um, sourced from well they're from the 2009 stereo mixes so obviously I don't have the uh, the capital uh, the one with the capital records uh label on it but i don't know i mean if um someday if i f maybe i find a what a bootleg or whatever it just so happens that uh, one of the reasons why i i did this project is because i purchased a bunch of um orphan orphan cds uh, basically cds that either have damaged um packaging or had a uh, you know had no packaging at all it's just the discs and i bought them for on ebay really cheap i think a two separate purchase the on two separate purchases the uh the per uh, it cost me like about maybe 10 15 dollars plus shipping so it's it's not bad and at least these things will uh what some in so what people in some circle call fantasy discs you know at least at least um they look legit so anyway um so opening the gatefold now so you have of course the standard um portraits right here and you have the track listing right here same as the uk version and there's this um little detail here uh, uh the catalog number and the copyright apple records the the later pressings i've seen some later pressings where it says copyright a uh, capital records instead of apple um so yeah and the pockets are side loading so on the first pocket of course we've got uh, the these are just some extra stickers that I made um, you know the original font and then the another extra copy of that and then these are portraits that were um, ex uh, an extra set that I, I had made during when, when I made the custom uh, white album box set a video of which is somewhere on my channel I put it in um, a link to it in the description so you could if you haven't seen it yeah you should uh, should probably see it <laughs> but yeah it's, it's a custom box set for the Beatles and Easter demos and there's an extra set of there was a, there's a set of portraits and this is an extra set of portraits so these are plain white sleeves I don't uh, I'm not sure I, I don't think they made a printed sleeves like the, like they did with the earlier uh, capital albums where you know there's a uh, what was that the youth set or something like that with the records contemporary records of the time um, these discs uh, yeah this is an EU copy actually I have an incoming set of uh, capital records uh, uh, well, it's the 2009 remasters, but they're pressed in the U.S., so at least that would, you know, uh, make this look a bit more authentic. So um, the poster is also a 2009 uh, pressing. So I didn't. I, I was thinking of doing you know, like you know printing the poster as a separate thing, like you know part of this. But I thought I have an extra poster. Why not just um, use it? It's. A, there's no difference well the if you watched one of my earlier videos there was um 
uh, I had some problems with this because they trimmed the top, whereas the original didn't. But yeah, and of course, white, uh, plain white sleeve. I actually cop I tried to copy the one on Magical Mystery Tour, but the, it, it had some sort of a wax layer on it that I don't know where to source that. So I just used these um, regular uh, white 120 GSM paper for it. So this is also UK, part of the earlier set. And that is our look at the White Album. Um, let me just put that aside and go with the next one, which is a Yellow Submarine here. And this is a single pocket like the UK version. The, um, the yeah, the biggest, yeah, there were a lot of uh, differences here. I think this alone merits inclusion in the box just because of the key differences here like um well instead of a single piece on board print it's also a uh, you know board a slicks on board construction so you got a larger slick here that uh, folds over here and then uh, you got a smaller slick that covers this side so you got um and there are key differences here like uh, you, you see the spine there's a capital logo the catalog number and then there's the stereophonic marking um if i remember correctly the, the mono version of yellow submarine was actually just a um a mix down or yeah a mix down of uh, the stereo version so it's not like you know there are differences as, apart from the panning um effects on the stereo version and that um the the one of the tracks uh, only a northern song was originally presented in both UK and the US as a uh, uh, simulated stereo there never was a true stereo mix so that you know when the 2009 remasters came around they uh, replaced it with a mono mix the original mono mix so here it is and as you as you can see the uh, the back side had significant differences from the um, the UK version. The track uh, the tracks here have uh, t track timings, and then the text here is different. The the original had a <laughs> review of the White Album, and this is uh, something else. They even had the little cartoon figures from the movie there. Then, of course, you got the RIAA seal manufactured by right here. And um, this part here with a catalog number. And then going to the front, uh, you, it looks mostly the same, uh, although there are key differences between uh, the UK version and this. Um, of course, there's a. I actually had to recreate this because I couldn't find a really good scan. So the graphics overall is from the high resolution copy that I've used for the uh, Yellow Submarine mini, UK mini mini LP that I made uh, some time ago, uh, and then I just modified some of the parts. Like I added this. Thankfully, the font is um, one of the more common fonts available. So off the top of my head, I couldn't remember what it was, but uh, yeah. Cooper, I think. No, I, I used it on a different part. Anyway, and then there's the copyright um, statement uh, for uh, King Features and Sub of Films. And then Nothing is Real is not here, so I just um, airbrushed it out. So, yeah, the this uh, the nothing special inside. Of course, this is the UK mix. Of course, uh, the UK release with the Apple logo and then I'm not sure if the US had an Apple logo, as, uh, Apple label as well, but yeah, just a plain white sleeve. And that is for Yellow Submarine. So let's uh, move on to Abbey Road, which is uh, which has the same construction as Yellow Submarine. So larger, slick at the front. As you can see, it's also a bit trimmed, I guess, to accommodate the flip, you know, the the flap here. Um, so it's there and then a smaller slick here for the um, the back so this is mostly the same apart from the uh, catalog numbers the uh, image uh, the actual packaging is mostly the same as the UK counterpart so 
ex uh, it also doesn't have Her Majesty on the track listing and the um, Apple logo is aligned and there's a a third line here that's not in the US release and of course the catalog number right here but overall it's you know the same nothing special um, I use the same graphic as the one that I used on the UK version uh, and then just made some changes and made sure that these are aligned and these are um, in the spot where they should be so yeah basically I <laughs> have the layered file somewhere in my hard drive um, so which brings us to the last last one of the bunch this is a let it be in uh, the US well, in the UK, actually, the um, the first pressing uh, came in a box set, like uh, a box set that contains a 160-page book, I think. I think it was 160 pages, but there it, it's a 160-page book, and then uh, the the disc, uh, the this the record itself was housed in a, a standard um, single pocket um, sleeve, and you know, front and back, and that's it, and then. The uh, and then the, there's a book that has it has a lot of pictures by uh, Ethan Russell. I'm not sure if uh, Linda McCartney's photos are in there, but a lot uh, Ethan Russell is credited, and uh, um, you could tell the the first edition from the second because the first had a sticker stuck at the inner cover because they at some point they forgot to uh, print the forgot to print the credits and I'm actually I'm planning on um, creating or replicating that because the official official um, the official mini LP that was printed in 2014 and again in 2015 didn't have the box set either it's just a you know the LP front and back and that's it so I was thinking of doing that but uh, looking at the scale it would have been like Oh, I don't know. It would even look like a mini notebook that's kind of out of proportion, proportionally too thick. So I may do it, but uh, I'm still trying to decide on how to do that <laughs> really small booklet with, you know, it's a square bind thing. So it's, it's a lot easier than doing a hardcover, making a hardcover. Anyway, I am straying too much. <laughs> so this is Let It Be, the mini LP. So it's the same graphics as the UK release, of course. Same images. Um, spine right there. Different catalog number, of course. And uh, there it is. And there's the back. So one key difference with from the UK is uh, the photos at the back, doesn't have, they don't have uh, borders, white borders like the UK ones. And then um, the credit at the bottom is it has a US address for Apple Records I believe it was established by Alan Klein I don't know probably so <laughs> and yeah so but more or less it's the uh, same so this is where it uh, becomes really different is when you open it and the gatefold now funny thing about this is it, this is not a scan of the of the original LP what I did was I uh, sourced each photo because I couldn't find a really good um, copy of the LP that I could use as a scan I mean in the Philippines there are uh, pressings original pressings that were also that had gatefold but um, a lot of the copies that I've seen or at least had access to had um, ring wear and the photos were a bit too faded so you know, I had to recreate this. Fortunately, these pictures are um, available online. Um, so a lot of these uh, came from various sources. Uh, these two, I believe, were, or these three rather, and then this. These were uh, cop uh, photos that were from the promotional material for the Get Back book and uh, let it be uh, rather the get back uh, documentary and these are just stuff that I found uh, using Google image search this is this is one of the most difficult actually um, I couldn't find this is not in the scans of the, uh, the the book the book that came with the UK release uh, it's not in any of the you know the get back um, book the hardcover one 
and it's not in the super deluxe let it be so and then i found it on i found this ringo picture on the long and winding road single and it just so happened that someone had a really you know good it, it's it's not in good condition but the part where ringo's picture is it's you know more or less good quality so i just um, i just really had to you know touch out some white spotting but otherwise yeah and then this is also oh yeah this is a more modern i think they restored the pictures or something so yeah there it is so and then of course the disc itself i've been fidgeting with this for a while <laughs> the disc is the same of course uh plain white but um look if uh if you have information on the inner sleeves like if I use plain white on all of these except for sergeant pepper but if uh, they should have a different kind of inner sleeves uh, let me know I'm, I'm gonna try to replicate it um, this is again the 2009 um, remaster so the apple is green instead of red I know um, I've actually I've been asked before whether why or rather why i didn't you know use or i didn't use a labeler or just burn cds you know maybe i maybe could have done sergeant pepper and just edited the the thing the looping inner group out of it and then burn cd and then now uh, created uh, recreated the capital records label i mean i have a a reasonably good quality scan that i can get from the magical mystery tour um, disc so why didn't i well the thing is i'm i'm not even sure if uh i could still burn cds i couldn't find um you know c cdrs or do they do they make those still i don't know but um I and i figured it's a lot easier if i could just rehome um, discs that have been you know thrown out or damaged I mean the discs themselves you know despite the some people hating on the uh, the digi sleeves from the 2009 remasters like uh, you know you know these you know people a lot of people don't like that because they think it's too flimsy but they actually do a good job protecting the discs I had I remember buying um, when I first started the, the project uh, the 2009 remasters project I remember buying past masters really cheap like um, five dollars for the two disc set and it turned out to be the the wall uh, you know the digi sleeve turned out to be damaged and the discs are not they're actually good and the, those are the same discs that I used when I made the past masters uh, mini LP custom mini LP so yeah well i uh again i've been strained too much from the discussion but um this has been the my second set of custom mini lps the the missing u.s albums um if you're still watching i would assume that you uh like this video so hey um do check out my other videos give this uh channel a subscribe every little bit helps and until the next video be good.